Thanks, um, Alex. Hi, everyone. Good morning. So um, I, I have to admit that I'm, I'm a little intimidated to um, be here today because um, I consider myself as a um, typography amateur. Um, by no means I'm a type expert, but um, I'm gonna um, talk a little bit about our work um, through the angle of type and how we um, use typography in our work and you know to understand also our own um, impulses. So. Um, Let's start out with um, this, um, a rectangle. So um, I feel like we're, we're kind of living in a, in a pretty extreme um, age of rectangles. Um, everything that we design um, comes with some sort of canvas, you know, and um, these canvases by nature, they exist in a kind of rectangular form. So here you see that um, we design um, books, you know, or paper-based materials to um, screen-based um, applications, different interfaces, and you may have noticed that um, these all come from um, live surface, you know, this uh, platform that provides designers um, these, um, uh, you know, images um, um, to which you can actually um, use to test your design. And um, these rectangles also exist in a kind of spatial um, condition. And I think that, you know, um, sometimes when, the, when, when, we, when we design, when the space is defined, um, we, we, we know what to do, but oftentimes um, these spaces also kind of create, I think, a kind of mental limitation as to what we can do and what we want to do with the content that we have in hand. And I think that, you know, we, 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 we're, we're always asking ourselves, how can we actually work with this kind of rectangular um, condition, but also use um, a different kind of means to defy that. You know, here you see that is another um, screen that, you know, now we just look at and, you know, play with um, pretty much throughout our daytime. So um, one thing that I would like to um, propose is to really think about using typography as a, as, a, as a canvas itself. And by using it as a canvas, we actually create a kind of very different condition through which we um, work and then we play. And I'm going to look at... Um, um, you know, um, several projects here that we have done in the last um, several years. And one thing that's pretty um, common, you know, throughout these projects is the kind of lack of resource, you know, be um, money resource or time resource or content resource. But, you know, um, surprisingly, typography somehow just became this thing, you know, through which we actually created um, the design that was really playful and also kind of, you know, really rich in different ways. Um, so so this was a, um, a, an, a project that I personally really liked, and um, it only exists, existed in this poster um, form. This was the um, identity as well as the poster that we created for the Taiwan Pavilion in the 2014 um, Venice Biennale. And at that time, we're also working on the identity and the entire um, exhibition for the um, American um, Biennale, um, um, American Pavilion. So this was kind of like overlooked, but we're working on both simultaneously. So um, the theme of the um, pavilion is um, is about the different um, different kind of domestic you know um, conditions in which um, people live in Taiwan. So you see that um, the design, the, the the exhibition design itself consists of these really playful parts, you know, designed by um, Bureau Sp um, Spectacular. Um, it's an architecture firm um, based in LA. So what we did was that we actually, you know, took the form of the architecture design and kind of translated it into these really playful letter forms. And you can kind of see um, some of the um, shapes and, you know, parts that um, come directly from the um, exhibition design. And then um, oftentimes our work, you know, um, just like uh, it was sort of created in a kind of very un unexpected um, manner in a kind of very, very, uh, you know, uh, extreme condition. This was an exhibition um, design created for um, storefront for architecture um, last year. And um, the theme of the exhibition is really interesting. It's about um, 41 
enclosed living systems that, um, that were created in the last century. So there were these 41 actual prototypes, you know, existed um, somewhere. So the, the um, exhibition really tried to understand and really question, you know, the idea of, you know, um, ecosystems and our relationship to um, all these building um, systems as a kind of living condition. So this is an example um, that is still um, working today. That's called the biosphere in Arizona. I think this is the world's largest um, enclosed living system. And um, also historically, there are a lot of you know, attempts. They're trying to create these enclosed systems. They're self-sustaining. This is an example um, that NASA created um, in the 60s. And also, um, you see that this is really strange, a kind of underwater you know, um, sh uh, shell through which that's supposed to actually you know, sustain um, a living um, being. So um, the, the expression consisted of these 41 parts and we were pulling to um, first of all to design the identity um, for the exhibition but not the exhibition itself but somehow you know something fell through along the way and we ended up um, having have to design this um, exhibition so um, the um, space um, is was at storefront for architecture is a few blocks um, down here and it's a kind of really extreme um, spatial condition. It's really, really narrow, first of all, and it has this kind of um, wedge, you know, uh, kind of uh, con condition. So um, so we, we thought that, well, first of all, we really had no time. Um, we had about like two weeks, I think, to to come up with the um, design for the exhibition. But at that time, we already had some idea for the um, identity. And we thought that, okay, how can we actually turn this identity, which is supposed to be a kind of pure, like pretty pure graphical representation of the content, but somehow turn it into um, a spatial um, design too. So the first uh, thing you know that we designed was this um, typeface, and you see that this typeface um, is it, it has this kind of really architectural um, presence, and it's really really tight, you know, um, in its spacing and um, its it, its um, f you know. Um, the, 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 the counter form in the letters themselves. And um, it created this uh, logo type, you know, Closed Worlds, that's the name of the exhibition. But also through this typography, we begin to actually, you know, uh, create these typographic expressions. You know, they're all big questions about the 41 um, living systems. And you begin to kind of feel that the project, you know, is kind of coming to life through these really provocative um, questions. And then um, these questions, became um, a kind of spatial, uh, spatially mapped, you know, cylinder. So each cylinder is about one particular project. On the outside, um, you see a question wraps around um, the cylinder, but on the inside, the content about each, um, you know, building or each um, closed system is kind of um, go mapped out on the inside. And then on the floor, um, there are these numbers that kind of echo um, with the uh, cylinder. So these are the numbers on the floor. Yes, you can see that you know um, the, the 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 expression design was was a really really low budget um, production, but um, it's through typography we began to really kind of animate um, the space and really populated um, the environment. And this is the facade on the outside, um, really provocative questions, you know. And then on the wall, there's this long wall um, that has um, the kind of timeline that maps out um, these 41 pro projects, as well as the different typology, you know, what type of building they were, and also their um, net zero impact. So here you see. Um, there's a timeline on the wall. But then um, to each project, there's also a pamphlet um, about the project, about the system itself. So you see that when people actually collect the 41 um, uh, booklets, um, they can actually have a book, you know. So again, really, really kind of um, low budget production, but the result itself was pretty um, impactful. This was a wallpaper that we designed. Again, you see that the typography was really the kind of primary thing that kind of held the poster together. And this is a really quick video of the project.
So this was the opening night, and then later on we learned that this exhibition was um, the most attended um, exhibition in the history of storefront. So that's a power um, to typography. Um, we also tend to, uh, we tend to have this kind of really playful attitude when it comes to identity design. Um, this was a project that we worked on, uh, I think three or four years ago, um, so I can kind of talk about it right now. Um, I'm going to show rejected um, ideas. So this was a YouTube um, channel. Um, their name was, uh, they were called Barely Political. It's a political satire um, YouTube channel and the, they were going through a name change, therefore they wanted to look at the identity as well. So this is an outline kind of, you know, specimen of their identity components. As you can see, there are a lot of really um, strangely playful um, elements here. One thing that we did notice is that this type, you know, that they were using um, to make the logo type that's called Feast of Flesh, you know, even had a name, a very interesting name. And um, we, we, we never, we, we didn't know about this typeface before, so we did a little research and, you know, realized that it's a typeface that's um, commonly used in a lot of horror um, film production, and we didn't feel like that was a playful, you know, that was, that was an appropriate expression for this channel, but we didn't want to abandon um, the idea of, uh, of this font, but we want to actually make it, I think, more um, playful and more accessible, too. So what we did was that we took the, um, the, the, the defining characteristic of that type, piece of flesh, and we created this, um, what we called um, barely up and down um, typeface. So um, this type um, can go both ways, you know, and you see that we, we kept the teeth, you know, at the um, edges of the type. And um, this was the um, logo, um, logo type um, proposal. Um, the client hated it. Um, they feel that um, the little, little fingers look like feet, you know, that make them extremely uncomfortable. So, um, so this was um, rejected. We're really, really sad. But we thought, oh, well, why don't we look into other direction? So um, we noticed that in their original design, they had this yellow duck. Um, so we thought, oh, well, the duck lead itself is really cute, and perhaps that itself can become some sort of inspiration for this um, for, for, for the logo type. So we created um, this type that's called Ducky Sands. You know, again, it's taking it's, it's taking on the kind of round, you know, um, bubbly form of a duck, and um, we created um, this logo type. And again, it's extremely playful. Um, they hated it. Um, so uh, this both were killed, and then you 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 you're welcome to go to YouTube and look at their. Uh, um, identity. We re we resorted to something that I think is more normalized, you know, using um, Futura. I think um, this is another project that we did again, very very small, um, small budget. It w this was for the Center for Architecture for their um, Heritage Ball, which happens once a year. So again, you see that the 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 the, the project itself was pretty kind of limited, you know, contained in that there weren't a lot of applications out of it. Um, we needed to do the announcement, um, a lot of digital-based communication as well as a program guide. So typography was really the thing that we had to use. So what we did was that we created this, what we call the kind of stretchy, um, type, and um, we didn't digitize it into a typeface, but the idea of it is that, you know, the type will actually expand itself horizontally to fill up um, any given space. Um, so this is the situation you see that it just, you know, um, opens up itself, you know, left to right, and this is where um, the type, let, um, the type, the letters, you know, push um, each other again to kind of fill up um, or to occupy the space. Um, this is another um, situation where you see that this was an invite, you know, digital um, invite. Again, something that's really, really, really simple, but um, it really created this kind of visual impact and really gave the program um, an identity. Um, these are the printed um, pieces. Um, last thing, so um, identity project. We, 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 we're we oftentimes asked to reimagine or redesign um, an existing brand's identity. So this project was for a um, tea company that's based in India. And what's pretty um, innovative about them is that they managed to ship um, fresh tea directly from tea gardens to consumers in a matter of like three days. And typically that process would take up to a year. So by the time you go to a store to um, buy tea, um, it, the tea has already been, you know, in warehouses or in a lot of, you know, middlemen kind of situations for up to a year. So um, they were getting a lot of good press and the business was doing really 
really, really well. However, the identity itself felt really, really generic, you know, um, and the packaging design was also um, pretty, you know, mundane. So um, I took a trip, you know, to um, the Darjeeling area um, to actually see, you know, how the tea was made. And um, I noticed that, you know, oftentimes the tea would sit in warehouses for a long time. But what was really interesting is when we, when, when I got to the, um, these tea estates, and as you can see that these tea gardens have been up there in the mountain for many, many, many years. Um, and it really feel that, you know, um, it's a kind of time capsule where you kind of see a lot of things from the last century are still in use. But what I noticed was that um, on the shipping crates, um, people use stencil typeface pretty much throughout, you know, um, in the warehouse as well as in the tea, um, tea gardens. And these um, stencil typefaces all had a really kind of distinct look and feel to it. So um, we did a little research just on stencil typeface um, in the tea industry and um, discovered that um, stencil typeface is really something that has been used on shipping on tea shipping crates for centuries. And we thought that, well, if we were to actually create a new identity um, for this um, brand, but we still want to tie it back to the very history of tea without being, you know, too romantic about it, perhaps we can actually look into um, a customized um, type a stencil typeface for them. So um, we created um, this typeface um, that we call T-Box um, stencil. It has um, three ways to it, and it's pretty much like, you know, um, what, what, what makes this identity is this kind of stencil um, look and feel. And again, you see how it extended into um, pictograms and it's all based on the kind of stencil language. But then, you know, this, the, the stencil typeface really defined the very, the kind of very specific look and feel in the packaging, you know, um, when it's combined with um, color blocks as well as different printing techniques, you know. So it has this kind of very different um, look and feel from the traditional um, tea, um, tea um, brands. So you see the kind of really liberal use of typography combined with um, simple um, colors. These are the um, the, um, the the the, the sample um, <clears throat> pack that they have. That they, that they ship out a lot of these because these are what customers use to um, to 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 try their tea. And you see that, you know, when it's used in printed materials, again, it becomes really, really effective. And this is an um, overview of everything. And you, here you see that, you know, the design elements are extremely um, simple, but we kind of managed to use typography to create a very different um, look and feel than the traditional um, tea brand. Okay, that's my talk. Thank you.